Welcome to the Arctic Arcs testing facility. We provide dynamic winter testing in a controlled environment of minus 7 degrees Celsius. Close to existing big scale outdoor testing, this over 60,000 square meters of proven ground allows a wide range of testing 24 7 all year around. Close to workshops and soaking rooms is the slope testing area, offering three levels of slopes 10, 12, and 15%. Different levels of surface friction can be provided depending on customer needs. The longest side of the facility is designated for testing of tires and system solutions. With the 480 meters long and 25 meter wide snow track, the most critical needs for testing of tires are satisfied. On the other side, three tracks of split friction provide good conditions for testing of braking and traction control. The tracks are 150 meters long with an additional acceleration lane of 150 meters. The cornerstone in the design is a 90 degree dynamic area, which provides a big space for various tests, such as handling when turning, allowing both left and right turns, as well as using the skid pad for testing lateral acceleration. With a pre diameter of 100 meters, this truly is a key feature of the Arctic Arcs. Free space along the wall can easily be turned into comfort testing areas, such as cobblestone as well as washboard. Customer offices with workshops are placed along the facility. These have a capacity of housing 30 workstations each along with a conference room and kitchen. They are complemented with 600 square meters of garage area, including soaking rooms for two cars. A heavy insulated roof is placed on top. Instead of using ridges, this is a high profile steel roof. If using a perforated steel profile, this will reduce noise levels during testing. The structural system of the rectangular buildings consists mainly of simply supported roof trusses and pin columns. All structural components are rolled sections of steel grade S355 or higher. Every 60 meters, the column truss system is replaced with a fixed frame that stabilizes the building horizontally for wind towards the long sides. For wind loads on the short sides, Struts are placed close to the gables and every 60 meters along the sides of the building. The real structural challenge of this project is the circular dynamic area. The concept is to lean frames all around the circle onto a concrete ring in the middle of the cone-shaped roof. The frames are connected to the ground by fixed supports and pinned to the concrete. Since the two main buildings are attached to the dynamic area, one on each side, there are two main gaps of 73 meters where no frames can be positioned. In this area, trusses carry the load to a three-dimensional truss arc. The arc shape is suitable for carrying high horizontal and vertical loads. In this part, high-strength steel profiles may be used to reach enough carrying capacity of the structure. The road section has been designed to meet all demands on bearing capacity, wear and frost heat. The materials in the different road layers are capable of carrying heavy vehicles and is designed for a lifetime of 20 years. In order to combine frozen and dry asphalt sections, the road is equipped with heating and cooling coils, installed 100 mm under the ground surface. To prevent frost heave and corresponding settlements damaging the coils, the road body is insulated with 200 mm of foam. The concrete foundations are surrounded by foam to prevent thermal bridges in the soil and backfilling consists of frost safe materials. Below the foam material is the road base, an additional heating coil has been placed. These coils are running on standby mode and starts if the frost depth would penetrate the foam layer. 
To be able to drain away water after, for example, a fire operation, the road is equipped with piping linked to an oil separator. Outside the concrete foundation, a drainage pipe has been installed. Foundations in the shape of square footings of reinforced concrete transfer loads from the structural systems down to the ground. One type of footing for each type of structural element has been specially designed to manage the different loading situations. Here you can see the footings along one of the rectangular buildings. The smaller footings are designed to carry loads from the roof trusses, while the larger ones are connected to the stabilizing frames. All footings are founded on the same foundation level, 2.5 meters below the ground surface. This is to keep the base plate of the footings below the maximum frost depth to avoid frost heave. The naturally occurring soil type used in the design was assumed to be a sandy moraine, a soil type common in northern Sweden. This kind of moraine is a coarse friction soil with good properties in strength as well as resistance to frost heave. A benefit from this type of soil is that the footings can be made smaller while still remaining stable. This is economically profitable since less concrete and excavation work is needed for the foundation. The mold shows a thermal analysis of how the temperatures transfer in the ground by time, which set temperatures at different locations. The sections 1 to 4 can be turned on and off, which makes this facility very suitable for a big variety of tests. It has also the potential of providing several simultaneous tests. The main energy thieves in this project are the cooling procedure and ventilation required to obtain good air quality while servicing up to 10 simultaneous vehicles. Particularly energy demanding is the hot and humid summer period. The cost of running the Arctic Arc's cooling and heating needs result in an annual cost of 15 million Swedish kroner with traditional thermal systems. Via geothermal storage systems, heat can be stored to be used during the winter and cold to be stored for use in the summer. Additional cooling needs will be met with the snow cooling system, which we believe will result in a saving of 1.2 gigawatt hours per year with a payback time of less than three years. Together with effective heat exchangers and indoor cooling in both ground and air, a whole system is rigged to be in harmony. Combined, these efforts will reduce the effect output needed for heating and cooling the Arctic arcs. The building costs have been calculated using reference projects such as ice hockey arenas as well as using a construction cost database. The total cost of the project is projected to be 900 million Swedish kroner for 66,000 square meters of testing facility. This includes over 4,000 metric tons of steel for the framework, 